Hi, my name is Peter Millett, and today we're here in the Arthrex studio, and we're going to talk about pan caps or shift for multidirectional instability of the shoulder uh, using the knotless suture tack anchor. So here's the case example. This is a 19-year-old, otherwise healthy male college student. He had progressive right shoulder pain and instability over the last four years. There was an atraumatic onset with numerous episodes of subluxations while playing sports. His physical exam demonstrated generalized ligamentous laxity, uh, increased humeral translation anteriorly and posteriorly on his physical exam. He had a positive anterior apprehension sign, and he had a 2 plus anterior and 2 plus posterior load and shift uh, with a positive sulcus sign. Here you see the imaging. He had an MR arthrogram, which showed increased joint volume and a chronically damaged labrum both anteriorly and posteriorly. His preoperative scores demonstrated that he had significant disability as a result of his injuries and his instability. His ASCS score was only 73, his SF12 was 49, and his quick dash score was 22.7. So our assessment was that the patient had multidirectional shoulder instability. We define multidirectional shoulder instability as symptomatic instability in more than one direction, one of which is inferior. Uh, his initial management was non-operative. He had over six months of physical therapy focus on dynamic scapular uh, stabilization and shoulder stabilization, and he didn't really have any improvement in his symptoms with that treatment. So he elected to pursue surgical treatment. Here you can see the examination under anesthesia, uh, the significant translation that's being demonstrated here, translates over the rim, both anteriorly and posteriorly. Our operative setup for a pan capsular shift is a lateral decubitus position with 15 pounds of traction. The arm is abducted to 80 degrees, and I think this allows better access to the inferior pouch of the shoulder so we can get really low anchors. We typically will use two anterior portals, through which we'll place a 5 millimeter cannula superiorly and an 8.25 millimeter cannula inferiorly. We'll use two posterior portals, one for viewing initially from posterior, which is a typical posterior portal, and then we'll use a posterior lateral portal or at least one or sometimes two to perform the posterior capsule labral uh, repair and shift. And then we'll use six to seven knotless suture tack anchors for a pan labral repair. At least three in the front, at least three in the back. If there's room, we'll put four in the, in the area where the principal direction of instability is. We use suture lassos. We'll typically use a 25 degree tight lasso anteriorly. In this case, it's the left shoulder, so we'll use a left 25 degree tight. And then posteriorly, we'll use a crescent lasso, which fits through the five millimeter cannula. Here you can see the setup, uh, lateral decubitus position. Uh, we start off with the scope initially posteriorly, and then we go uh, and create our anterior superior portal. And here you can see demonstrating the panlabral tear that's, a, that's uh, associated with this patient with multidirectional instability. We elevate the labrum. Here, since the principal direction is anterior, we're going to start anteriorly first so we can get a nice shift. Uh, we've placed one knotless suture tack anchor through a guide inferiorly already at approximately the, the 5 o'clock position. Now we're working our way up more superiorly. Here we are at a, approximately the 3.30 o'clock position. You can see the knotless suture tack anchor going through the guide after we've drilled with a hard bone drill. There's two different drills for the knotless suture tack. And in most of the young patients, we typically will use the hard bone drill because they have good quality bone. Uh, we'll retrieve the suture out this anterior superior cannula, and then we'll use a 25 degree tight curved lasso to pass the suture, performing a capsule labral shift. We'll grab the capsule and the labrum, so we shift the capsule from inferior to superior and from lateral to medial. Now we'll pass that uh, simple suture uh, through the loop of the knotless suture tack, and then retrieve it through the eyelet mechanism so that it's, it will uh, lock on itself, and then we can tension the soft tissues prior to uh, securing down the knotless suture tack, as you see here. We'll place a little grasper, pulling the labrum and the capsule superiorly, uh, and then we'll tension the, the final construct so we can get excellent tension in the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. Here we're placing our posterior cannula. We're visualizing from anterior superiorly. You can see we can get all the way down, almost to the 6 o'clock position. You can see the anterior anchor. Now we're placing our posterior inferior anchor, again through the guide. The guide allows us to lever the head out of the way, which really facilitates uh, uh, getting the anchor position where you want it. And then we'll use a crescent lasso, and the nice thing about the crescent lasso is you can take a large bite of the capsule because the lasso will, will, uh, will allow you to uh, get a large amount of soft tissue on this. And you can see here the completed repair. 
And then now what we're going to do is close the posterior portal. We'll use a number one PDS suture, come through with the crescent lasso, and then come through with a 22 degree bird beak through the capsule, and we can do a capsular closure posteriorly to provide additional stability. And here you can see the completed repair, excellent tension in the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex and the middle glenohumeral ligament complex with anchors circumferentially around the whole uh, area of damage. Our postoperative rehabilitation, we immobilize the patient for six weeks. Uh, we start pendulums in passive motion around five to six weeks. Uh, at six to seven weeks, we'll begin active and active assisted range of motion. At seven weeks, strengthening and then we allow them to return to full activities at four to five months postoperatively. Using an arthroscopic treatment for multidirectional instability is really advantageous because it allows the surgeon to address anteriorly, posteriorly, inferiorly, and the rotator interval all in one procedure. Uh, in this series, we had 45 shoulders and we had an 85% survivorship with this complex condition. The knotless suture tacks, I think, are ideal for treating MDI. They're fast, versatile, and reliable and they allow a low profile repair, which is really important when you're placing this many anchors around the labrum. You're gonna minimize joint irritation from knots and you're gonna achieve a very secure repair and you're gonna be able to tension the capsule and the labrum very effectively. Thank you very much.